Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I have an awesome video for you today because we are gonna be checking out this bad boy here which came in this box direct from NVIDIA. It is of course the RTX 4070 Super Founders Edition and we have Cosmo, my lovely water cool test bench here doing the honors today in the benchmarks. We've got a whole bunch of games at a variety of resolutions to get through today to work out whether this card is worth the cash. Now, speaking of cash, we have a bit of an update from NVIDIA in that it got a little bit of something wrong in the specifications that we revealed last week at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. It's actually in our favor this time though. The specification that we're talking about is the L2 cache. It's actually much larger at 48 megabytes for, for this card, which is a lot larger than the 36 gigabytes that we saw with the 4070. So the 4070 Super basically getting the same amount of cache as the 4070 Ti and the 4070 Ti Super. So that basically means that more data is gonna be able to store in that cache, which means that less data is gonna to have to be cached out to, or stored in it, uh, the onboard memory, the 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and that means should be or should result in lower latency, which should mean higher frame rates. So that's all good news. In terms of other upgrades though, we've got the increase in RT cores, tensor cores and CUDA cores, but there's not a lot else going on in terms of upgrades. So if you wanna see all the increases, you can see the specification table, which I'll put up on the page now to save me going through a load of waffle and random numbers. Well, they're not random, but you know what I mean. I don't, don't wanna go bore you with all those numbers. So the one thing that we don't get with the RTX 4070 Super though is a memory upgrade. So the memory bus width stays at 192 bits and the memory amount stays at 12 gigabytes. And I know that's a bit of a sticking point with some of you out there, you're paying you know, quite a bit of money for a decent graphics card and you kind of want it to have 16 gigabytes. But really, this card is aimed at 1080p and 1440p gamers. Even if you game at maximum settings, you're unlikely to find many games that are gonna utilize 16 gigabytes at 1440p or especially at 1080p. So for the time being, I don't think that argument holds true. But if you go into the future, sure, there might be more games that are gonna utilize more than 12 gigabytes, but 12 gigabytes is 50% more than eight gigabytes, which agreed, you wouldn't expect on a card at this price. So 12 gigabytes for now is kind of acceptable, I think, um, rather than being um, you know overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive or anything else. But of course, we do have the 16 gigabyte upgrade coming with the 4070 Super, which gets the four gigabyte upgrade from 12 to 16 over the 4070 Ti standard models. So that's it from the intro. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to have your support. And what do you think of the 4070 Super? Are you gonna get one or are you waiting for the 4070 Ti Super maybe with its extra memory? Don't forget to let me know in the comments below. And also don't forget to let me know what you think of this video. Do you wanna see more results, different results, all that kind of stuff? Just let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, of course. Without further ado, let's crack on with the results. It's really important to use the latest drivers and software when benchmarking games, and that's exactly what I've done here. I've used the latest drivers, Windows updates, etc., for my benchmarking, and there's a very good reason for that because the latest versions of some of the games in the benchmarks, specifically Halo and Forza, have seen massive increases in performance over the last couple of months. So any results that are basically taken over a couple of months ago are pretty much irrelevant now because drivers and game updates have massively improved performance. So I'd be very wary of anybody listing previous generation cards if they haven't specifically said that they have retested all those cards with newer drivers and software. With that out of the way, I also have my test system to talk about. I'm using an Intel Core i9-12900K processor, which is stock speed and is water-cooled along with 32 gigabytes of 6,000 megahertz Kingston Fury DDR5 memory. I'm also using a Solidime P41 Plus SSD and we have an ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Hero motherboard as well. First up in our game benchmarks is Halo Infinite, and this is in campaign mode, and this is one of the games that I've seen significant improvements in, uh, either due to drivers or game updates over the last couple of months, so minimum frame rates massively improved in this game for a lot of cards. Here though, the RTX 4070 Super was performing very close to the RTX 4070 Ti, which is pretty much what we expected. It was also significantly faster than the RX 7800 XT from AMD, and there's a sizable gap as well between it and the RTX 4070. So some pretty interesting findings there. 
Moving up to 1440p and we have a few extra high-end cards here then because it didn't make much sense testing those at 1080p because you're not really going to be spending a thousand dollars on a card to game at 1080p. So the RTX 4070 Super doing really really well here and actually beating the RX 7900 XTX in Halo. So still not a game that performs well on AMD cards and uh, a sizable difference between it and the RX 7800 XT for example and also a fair large gap between it and the RTX 4070 as well. Moving up to 4K then and now we see the cards with more memory starting to step ahead with the RX 7900 XT even though it seems to be at a significant disadvantage in this game finally outperforming the 4070 Super. The RTX 4070 Ti also outperforming it mainly on the average frame rate while it still maintains a decent gap between it and the RTX 4070 and RX 7800 XT. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5 now then, and this is generally a game that prefers AMD cards, as we can see here, the RX 7800 XT outperforming both the RTX 4070 Ti and 4070 Super on the minimum 99th percentile, while the 4070 Ti does manage to beat it on the average frame rate. So overall here, the AMD card is faster than the 4070 Super though, uh, which manages a slight increase over the RTX 4070. Stepping up to 1440p now then, and again we have a pretty familiar set of results. Again though favouring AMD generally in this game with the RX 7800 XT probably performing higher than where it should overall if you compare it with other games. But still the RTX 4070 Super sitting between the RTX 4070 and 4070 Ti and the RX 7800 XT being a slightly better buy if you play a lot of Forza. Stepping up to 4K and things look quite different. So we've got the RTX 4070 Super now pretty much outperforming the RX 7800 XT. The latter had a slightly higher average frame rate, whereas the Nvidia card had a much higher minimum 99th percentile. This game also has DLSS, so it's received quite a few updates over the last few months, DLSS being one of them. And if we add in DLSS into the fray, it now outperforms the RTX 4070 Ti and actually comes close to matching the minimum 99th percentile of the RTX 4080. So it's a handy feature to have in Forza Horizon 5. Moving on to Far Cry 6 now then, and this is another game that tends to prefer AMD cards, but here the gap between the 4070 Super and the 7800 XT much closer than we've seen in the past with just a few frames separating the two cards. The RTX 4070 Ti only offering a very, very slim lead over the 4070 Super, which maintains a fairly substantial lead over the RTX 4070, mainly on the minimum 99th percentile though. Moving on to 1440p in Far Cry 6 and again we've got the RX 7800 XT out in front but just by a few frames per second over the 4070 Super which again sits between the 4070 Ti and RTX 4070. Stepping up to 4K and we've shed some of the lower end cards because they generally don't perform that well at 4K and you wouldn't buy them for running at this resolution. So to make the graph clearer, we've kept the higher end cards, which is why the RTX 4070 Super has slipped down the graph somewhat, but it still sits slap bang between the RTX 4070 Ti and the 4070. And here it's actually outperforming the RX 7800 XT on the average frame rate while sitting slightly behind on the minimum 99th percentile. Our final test in Far Cry 6 throws a bit of a curveball with DXR reflections enabled or ray tracing basically and here things are kind of stretched out a little bit. The RTX 4070 Super is falling back behind the RTX 4070 Ti and RX 7800 XT but again outperforming the RTX 4070 by quite a wide margin. Moving on to Watch Dogs now then, and here we have the RTX 4070 Super massively outperforming the RX 7800 XT and again sitting between the RTX 4070 and 4070 Ti. Stepping up to 1440p and it's a pretty similar situation with the 4070 Super massively outperforming the 7800 XT and sitting between the RTX 4070 and 4070 Ti while also giving the much more expensive RX 7900 XT a run for its money. Stepping up to 4K then and we see the RTX 4070 Super again sitting between the RTX 4070 and 4070 Ti and again outperforming the 7800 XT but there was quite a bit of a gap here between the 4070 Super and 4070 Ti. 
One advantage that NVIDIA enjoys in Watch Dogs Legion is DLSS support, and at 4K, the RTX 40 Super again performing in between the RTX 4070 Ti and RTX 4070, but it should be noted that the bottom of the graph is occupied by the high-end AMD cards with even the, RT the RX 7900 XTX massively outperformed here once DLSS is enabled on the 4070 Super. Our next game is Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition with ray tracing enabled and here we have the RTX 4070 Super outperforming the RX 7800 XT and RTX 4070 and performing reasonably close to the 4070 Ti although that latter card did manage a much higher average frame rate. Stepping up to 1440p and we have the RTX 4070 Super again outperforming the RX 7800 XT and 4070 with the RTX 4070 Ti offering slightly higher frame rates. At 4K, which is a pretty tough test in this game, the RTX 4070 Super still maintaining above 30 frames per second, as did the RTX 4070, which was slightly slower. However, here the RX 7800 XT did manage a slightly higher minimum 99 percentile, even if it's beaten on the average frame rate. And again, the RTX 4070 Ti sitting a little out in front. Our final test in Metro Exodus is simply to enable DLSS and here you'll see all the NVIDIA cards fly up the graph because we don't have the equivalent support for AMD in this game. So here the RTX 4070 Super massively outperforming even the RX 7900 XTX and again sitting between the RTX 4070 and the RTX 4070 Ti. Moving on to Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is one of my favourite games because it looks absolutely stunning with the latest generation of graphics cards. And here we have a fairly compact set of results, which is usually to be expected with this game. It just seems to be a bit of a resource hog in other areas. And uh, the RTX 4070 Super, though, offering one of the better frame rates amongst most of the cards here, matching the RTX 4070 and slightly ahead, but only by a one frames per second over the RTX 4070. Moving up to 1440p and Flight Simulator then, and if we focus on the NVIDIA cards for a moment, we have the RTX 4070 Super sitting between the 4070 Ti and the 4070, but it does offer a tough competitor for AMD's cards. It actually outperforms the minimum 99 percentile of the RX 7900 XT and comes close to matching the RX 7900 XTX as well. At 4K, we start to see some of the lower end cards drop off, but we still see the RTX 4070 Super maintaining a minimum 99th percentile of 50 frames per second, which matches the RX 7900 XT, even though that card again managed a higher average frame rate. The RX 7900 XTX again outperforming the 4070 Super, but not by huge margins, while the 4070 Ti managing higher average and minimum 99th percentiles again. An interesting fact about Flight Simulator is that it has both FSR and DLSS support. So AMD and Nvidia's frame rate boosting technologies are both present in this game and the RTX 4070 Super sees a massive increase in frame rates, rising from a minimum 99 percentile of 50 all the way up to 93. So a significant boost of frame rates there. And this is enough to match the RX 7900 XTX with FSR enabled. So the AMD card still seeing a decent boost in frame rates, but not quite able to beat the 4070 Super, so NVIDIA enjoying a bit of an advantage here with DLSS 3.0. Our final game test is Rainbow Six Extraction and here we have the RTX 4070 Super again performing pretty much as we expected it to initially although we've seen quite a bit of variation over the previous graphs. Here though it sits slap bang between the RTX 4070 Ti and 4070 and outperforms the RX 7800 XT. Stepping up to 1440p and here we actually see the RX 7800 XT Leapfrog, the RTX 4070 Super, which again sits between the 4070 and the 4070 Ti. Stepping up to 4K and the situation doesn't change that much, although here the 4070 Super manages to match the RX 7800 XT while still sitting slap bang between the 4070 Ti and 4070. 
Our final game test is Rainbow Six Extraction, again at 4K, but this time with DLSS enabled because it is enabled in this game, whereas FSR for AMD isn't. So obviously a bit of an advantage for Nvidia in this graph. Even so, we've got the RTX 4070 Super sitting pretty much between the 4070 Ti and 4070. And of course, with a massive boost of frame rates, it is going to leapfrog pretty much everything that AMD has, including the RX 7900 XTX. And it actually offers pretty much double the frame rates of the RX 7800 XT. We made it to the end. This is the last graph and it is system power consumption. So we have quite a few more cards in this graph for the simple reason that power consumption isn't really affected by other factors such as software updates and drivers. So I can include some previous results here from older tests. So here we've got the RTX 4070 Super sitting at 392 watts and that is actually slightly lower than the RX 7800 XT. So overall, NVIDIA does have a pretty good power efficiency with the 40 series. However, the card does draw significantly more power around 70 watts or so than the RTX 4070. So all those extra cores do come with the downside that it does draw more power. So what do we make of the RTX 4070 Super then? Well, I think Nvidia is offering a much better value card here in, in that it performs a lot faster than the RTX 4070 in pretty much every single test and it sits much, much closer to the 4070 Ti in most tests as well. Now that card does still have a significant lead in some of the benchmarks, but overall the two cards aren't separated by more than a few frames per second. Now the more difficult argument really is what to do when the RTX 4070 Super receives a price cut, which it is already doing. I think at around 50 to 100 bucks, it makes sense to go for the super card, but any more than that and the 4070 starts to become slightly better value even though it is a bit slower. The other options of course you've got are AMD's cards, the RX 7800 XT is faster than the 4070 Super in one or two tests that favour AMD in specific games. Other than that, it's either a match for it or more often than not, it's a lot slower. And that is kind of what you'd expect given that card costs around $50 to $100 less as well. So NVIDIA obviously enjoying the support of DLSS and that generally performs pretty well and usually faster than uh, AMD's FSR. For example, we saw that in Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. DLSS is a pretty good feature to have and it is supported in, I think, over 500 titles now. So that's a pretty good advantage for NVIDIA there. Now, obviously, if you want that memory upgrade, you're going to have to step up to a more powerful graphics card, such as the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is coming very, very soon. So if you do have an extra 200 bucks to spare that you might think you want to future-proof your system a little bit more, then definitely wait around till next week because I will be looking at the 4070 Ti Super then and we'll be pitching it against the 4070 Super and a whole bunch of other graphics cards in games to see just how that performs because we're hoping that it's going to be just essentially a cut down RTX 4080 and perform as such, which could be quite exciting. So that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. I love hearing what you guys think. And if you're going to buy the 4070 Super based off this review and others that you've read, love hearing your comments below as well. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to have your support. And I will be back very soon with lots more cool videos. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.